All right, guys, Jameson and Alex here. Today we're going to be talking about the Steel Hawk Fighter yeah. subclass from Griffin's Saddlebag Book 2. They have sponsored an entire series where we cover all 12 of the subclasses Good from people. their newest Kickstarter book. Yeah. Awesome content from them, guys. If you want to get access to all those things today, you can pre order the book now or you can become a monthly Patreon for them and gain access to all of their content, which is Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Thousands of things. <laughs> Literally magic <laughs> items, monsters, character options, all that jazz, guys. Awesome people there. Awesome quality content. Co co quality. Quality. <laughs> quality. Yes. That, so. that, that needs to be a meme immediately. Yes. We, we need, we need <laughs> shirts. We need shirt. Shirts of mini fan, fan art for shirt quality. <laughs> we'll send a free shirt to whoever gives us the best idea immediately for sure. Done. All right. <laughs> Wow, can't that believe that sense. just happened. <laughs> but what we're going to do, if you're new to the channel, is we're going to go over all the abilities gained in the subclass. We're going to rate it on roleplay, combat, and synergy based on the abilities gained in the subclass, mm -hmm. how much they improve on the base class abilities. Yes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to be in our D&D Beyond Players Bundle giveaway. Because free stuff is great. And let's jump straight into it. Alex Steelhawk. Okay. Very, very quick on my little side note with these. I like to bring it up in all these videos just because it, it just amazes me how much and how well they do this. Uh, with all the subclasses in this book, the just keystone art they put in front of everything tells you exactly what the subclass is going to be about. You can guess very quickly. I mean, with a fighter art, okay, you're, okay, is it a fighter? Is it a paladin? But you get the idea quickly with you see the weapon in hand, what we're going to be doing here, which is fantastic. So our base ability, we, and the whole thing is built around, is launch. You learn the magical launch yourself with a mighty leap. While standing on a solid surface, you can use a bonus action to leap horizontally, vertically, or any combination thereof up to a combined dis distance that totals m no more than 15 feet. For example, you can choose to leap 10 feet horizontally, 5 feet vertically, potentially allowing yourself to avoid dangerous traps or a barricade blocking your way. When you reach 7th level in this class, the leap's distance increases to a total of 30 feet. You can't use this feature if your speed is 0. And if, you're leap, uh, and if you do leap completely horizontally, you still leap one foot up off the ground. Leaping in this way does not provoke any opportunity attacks. That's nice. Yes. And if you fall immediately after using this feature, you can subtract up to 30 feet from the fall when calculating falling damage. Also nice. You can use this feature three times when you regain all expended uses when you finish a short or a long rest. When you get 7th level, you can use it 4 times between rest, and 15th level, you can use it 5 times between rests. Leaping go. in this way also strengthens your strikes by using the force of your momentum, a.k.a. freaking gravity. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. If you make a melee weapon attack immediately after using launch, you have advantage on the attack roll, and if the attack hits, the target takes an extra 1d8 damage of the weapon's type. At 10th level, the extra damage becomes 1d10. At 18th level, the damage becomes 1d12. The attack can be made immediately after you land, at the end of the leap, or during the leap's movement. So, like, for some reason, you were, like, diving through somebody in the air, like, sticking them. You could, like, attack them on the way back to the ground kind of thing. Yes. And one quick note on this, too. We did confirm it is only the first attack. Yes. That is the intention for this ability checked with the creator. So We did. That is the intention on here, in case you were wondering if it was every attack, which it's not. That being said. Because you and your fighter, you're like, I'm going to kill everything right. every turn. Yes. Yeah. That being said, on to the next ability at third level, which is Nimble Lancer. Lances have the versatile property for you while you're not mounted, dealing 1d8 piercing on hit when held with one hand, and 1d12 piercing damage when wielded with two. When you use your launch feature and immediately hit with the melee attack using a lance, it counts as if you're wielding it with two hands. If you hit a creature within five feet of you using a lance, you can immediately move up to five feet away from it without provoking attack of opportunity from the target. You must be standing and have movement remaining in order to move in this way. Next up, also still at level 3, because why not? We have Bird Caller, actually a rare RP ability for a fighter. Love yeah. this. You have the ability to identify common birds by their calls. You have advantage on animal handling checks when interacting with any beast that has an innate flying speed. In addition, you gain the ability to cast the animal messenger spell, but only as a ritual and only targeting a beast that has an innate flying speed. So birds, bats, bees, <laughs> you know, sure. things, things like that. Then at level 7 we have Steel Grace. Wearing armor doesn't impose disadvantage on your dexterity stealth checks. In addition, whenever you make a dex saving throw, you can use your launch feature as a reaction. When you do so, you take no damage if you succeed and only half damage if you fail. So, kind of like evasion. Yeah. Essential. P plus an RP ability in there. Look at, look at 
fighter in here. Hey, you got to be all good and fancy. Before we get on to the last few abilities on here, That's right. give a quick shout out to our other sponsors for today, which is the Humblewood Tales Kickstarter from Hitpoint Press. This is an expansion to the original Humblewood setting created by Hitpoint Press, where we have five new adventures from players level three to level eight, completely unique and different from the traditional fantasy tropes, wildland humanoid creatures, opposed to your typical elves, dwarves, humans, etc. So if you're looking for a way to mix things up, it's a good way to do so. Back to our abilities at level 10, we have Eagle Eye. Your attack made immediately after or during the launch scores a critical hit on a natural 19 or 20 on your d20 roll. If you hit a flying creature with this attack, it must also make a strength saving throw equal to a DC of 8 plus your proficiency plus your strength modifier. Don't love the fact that it's a strength save, but we'll get that here in a minute. <laughs> on a failed save, its speed is reduced to zero until the start of its next turn. You know what that does to flying creatures, people? Oh, yes. Okay. In addition, you gain proficiency in the perception skill if you don't already have it, and your proficiency skill is doubled for perception checks you make that relies on sight. Yes. So again, leading into this whole you know bird thing, you can see things well. You know your surroundings, and you're quiet, and you're in your stealthy stuff. It's great. Then level fifteen, we have predatory instinct. You have advantage on initiative rolls, and when you roll initiative and have no uses of launch remaining, you regain one use. So. A little bit more consistency with that. Always got one in the pocket that way. And then lastly, we have improved launch at level 18. When you hit a creature with a melee weapon attack immediately after or during your launch, it must also succeed on a strength saving throw, uh, which is 8 plus proficiency plus your strength modifier, or be knocked prone. In addition, you can push yourself beyond your normal limits when you use your launch feature. When you do, your leap can total a maximum of 90 feet instead of 30, and you so don't far. suffer any damage from falling until you land again. Once you use this feature, you shouldn't. <laughs> to do so again I love that. before you finish a short or long rest. Each time you do, you suffer one level of exhaustion. You can't use this feature in this way if you're suffering from two or more levels of exhaustion. So, uh, so if you yeah. really needed to, you could, which I like. It does give you an option if you really needed to do it one more time to yep. get that extra damage or get to something that's trying to run away from you, mm -hmm. potentially pit it to the ground. Like that's, yep. It's there, but you do have to suffer the There's kind of a cost. crash for it. But, which, again, I'm totally fine with. Because okay. it's your choice. But you have an option if you really need to go into your reserves of energy to really make something happen. Yes. So, those are all the abilities gained in the subclass. So now we'll move on into the rating portion of the video. First up is the roleplay value, asterisk as always. Talking about roleplay value, we're talking about interacting with the world around you, interacting with NPCs, non-combat scenarios, avoiding combat, basically things outside of the initiative order. Not talking about your class fantasy, history, lore, background, that's on you as a player. We can't rate you, but we can rate the abilities gained in the subclass, how they might improve your potential in those role play scenarios. That's correct. So, all that being said on here, the launching feature uh, and leaping that goes along with that potentially yep. does have some use for role play in yeah. the exploration department, sure. though it does have limited uses per short rest, so you do have to keep that in mind so you're not just leaping and bonding everywhere all the time. Right. Uh, so, there's potential there. It's pretty solid. And Animal handling with birds is niche, but can be useful as birds are typically some of the better scouts that yes. can be. But it, and it does say anything with an innate flying speed. So you're going to be bats. Right. It, uh, there's some other things I was there. being too specific. I yes, mean, with flying things typically, flying creatures but tend to be pretty good scouts. Most so having commonly birds. <laughs> to uh, work with those things and relay messages can be very impactful. Yep. Uh, if you want to be a scout, for example... You could definitely have that ability to do so. So there and is definitely some opportunities. There's no limitations there. to that, besides the fact that it is a ritual only, so you can't do it like in the middle of a combat kind of thing. It's going to take you some time to sit down there and do that message bit. But as long as you've got the time on your hands, you can do it as much as you need. Exactly. And then, of course, no disadvantage for stealth uh, with or your armor definitely comes into play because that can be one of the biggest pitfalls of fighters or heavy armor wearers yep. in general is having that issue was trying to be sneaky yes but i think the most impactful important thing on here is the double proficiency for perception on sight yeah is you just see all of it and crazy. everything all of the time so uh that's probably <laughs> you gotta make sure you, is make sure your the, race or your background is giving you dark vision because otherwise you're wasting <laughs> how good correct. your eyes are like, perception is probably the most impactful in general yeah. roleplay save that's most consistently impactful. Yep. So having a big bonus like that is very, very good. 
For sure. Uh, that being said, there are some niche uses again with the launch, especially once you get to the exhaustion level where you're just shooting 90 feet. Yeah, I mean, which, if hey, you can get some places with 90 foot. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely stuff that can be done there. And even the limited uses thing, it's it's three uses per short rest, not three uses per long rest. Right. So and then that scales up to four, and even eventually five uses per short rest. If you're needing to leap more than five times per short rest, goodness, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's a lot. But though, I mean, though, if you're doing it in role play and combat, you could burn through them. You, pretty you can, right? That being said, we gave it a four out of five. Yeah, there are a little bit of niche uses on here, but getting stuff back on short rest is a big deal. Yep. And it's going to lean a lot more into the exploration side of things. Sure. And typically fighters, just as a base rule, don't have a lot of options when it comes to role play because yep. they're all about attack, attack, attacking. Yep. So but any extra abilities that give them utility for exploration or, uh, you know, sending messages via flying creatures yep. is very welcome and really pads up some of their base class weaknesses right. in that Which, because this is, this is giving you a buff or improvements in three different specific skill areas. Animal handling, stealth, and then obviously the perception's a little, little bonkers. Right. So, very nice overall. On the combat side of things, I, I couldn't put into words how much I loved this subclass in like a less than a 30 minute conversation we had <laughs> beforehand. Because, again, with primarily martial classes, you're Fighters, your barbarians, and your most of your monks, even rogues, even unless you're playing like a, with an archer-based rogue, getting two things is mo is very important and sometimes challenging because you know, your primary source of damage is just melee weapon attacks. If, if you're, you're strength based, if, yes. you're, if you're for strength based, if you're you know if you're can't read something, you're only relying on like throwing a yes. spear or something. It's just not going to be the same thing. So the fact that this allows you to leap. And it doesn't take your movement speed. So you can leap and then move. It's just as long as your movement speed hasn't been reduced to zero by some right. magical effect, something else, where, it's, you know, where you've been knocked prone or something like that, you have to get up first. As long as you've got some movement, and it does specify that you can angle it, allows you to jump over any traps or any other, maybe even some difficult terrain mm -hmm. that's, that's there in your way. Because it says as long as you, even if you jump straight horizontally, you're at least one foot off the ground. So, you know, yeah. there's... There's a little bit of clearance there yep. to get around stuff. You're getting extra damage that's scaling up with that extra attack when you do do the launch feature, so you can get to something and pounce on it immediately. The versatility with lances. Mm -hmm. that's Interesting. very lovely. Because, again, lances, the way they're coded into base 5th edition rules, unless you're a mountain combatant, you're mm -hmm. at a, they're kind of not ideal. They're just, right. not, they're just not the best choice. So the fact that this lets you use that that way, you can be a... Two-handed lance wheeler whopping people, or my preferred setup. You could you could be a, a tank with the shield and having this in one hand, mm -hmm. and just be a problem. Yeah, that is. <laughs> You're you are literally just captain engage whatever you want to at this mm -hmm. point. Uh, yeah, then I think it's yeah to not just gloss over that. Like you have a ten foot reach with a shield. That's a big deal. Like yeah. not to just completely gloss over that. Yeah, and and. As long as you hit somebody, you can immediately move away from them you know, without provoking opportunity attacks. So you can get in, hit somebody, like launch, jump on somebody, then back away from them as long as you hit them with that attack. Yeah. And, of course, on your launch, you're going to have advantage on that first attack coming down anyway. So very good chance you're going to hit. Uh, the fact that you get around you know, falling damage up to 30 feet early on and then eventually all falling damage as long as you're using your launch features, that's great. So you don't have to, you're not giving yourself extra damage that way. You get Steel Grace is going to give you essentially evasion to get around, you know, dexterity saving throw AOE effects. You get an increased critical chance with Eagle Eye, and my favorite my favorite chance thing you get with this is just the chance to pluck stuff out of the air. Oh yeah, <laughs> it is a strike chance, so you know the chance of you putting one of these big guys on the ground is uber Unlikely. low. But it's technically possible, especially if you've got a bard in there with some cutting words and like, eh, yeah. <laughs> bring him down. Sorry, couldn't help myself. Uh, the Predatory Instinct is going to give you an extra use of your launch. If for some reason you did have to burn a bunch of them, either for RP or for another combat that happened, you haven't had time to short rest. And eventually your final capstone ability, the improved launch, the chance to knock something prone as part of that launch. And because you're a fighter and you get to attack 17,000 times, if you do happen to knock something prone on that first dive and you don't action surge, if you have it available so you can then annihilate whatever is on the ground in front of you, 
I question what you're doing with your life. <laughs> uh, because, mm -hmm. again, as a fighter, you can do that. So if you know if they happen to fail that strike saving throw on that launch in, they're now on their butt. You can just absolutely wail on somebody. Now, granted, yeah. it is still a strike save. But the chance is that you could put somebody on their butt is great. We did verify this also with the creator that this the chance to knock prone is only on the one attack as part of the launch. Right. The, all the launch stuff is the first attack. Right. It's not you can't knock somebody prone with every single yeah. attack with your land or something because it would get a little while. A little while. We did verify that. All of that. It's this is a very to me high floor, but maybe not a super high ceiling, but of extremely high floor, reliable damage, maneuverability. We gave it a four out of a possible five on the combat side of things. Uh, yes. Really, really like this. I like the way it, like the way it leans into the lance and gives it a, a more reliable use that 5th edition on a base kind of pigeonholes it to mountain combatant only. Yes, definitely. So it's giving you probably one of the biggest weaknesses, as Alex said earlier, is getting mobility as a fighter, yep. which is going to really help you get around the battlefield quite a bit. Having that extra movement to yep. like leap forward, leap up, get into the air is going to be really helpful yeah. as a fighter which you typically as a strength based fighter wouldn't really have access to doing that kind of thing so definitely very interesting and gives you a little bit more utility on the battlefield which always can be very impactful always good which brings us on to the synergy side of things the mobility to be able to get in and out of the fray and get up and personal with flyers is a big deal yeah I mean, no normally you're looking at your rangers rogues and casters to deal with things in the air and you're like now nah, i'm gonna go get him right <laughs> and then, of course, you also have the free disengage option, yes. which is nice. And you also get the potential for a pseudo evasion. Mm -hmm. So some extra defensive options as well, which is interesting. And then the capstone for, for prone, again, is, is really nice. But strength saves can be a bit iffy. Especially and it, later on. And, yeah. and you're getting it at level 18. So uh, for that, it's, it's all right. Um, you might want to focus more on the smaller stuff on that side, as we tend to say yep. on, you know. Con saves, strength saves, yeah. and focus on the smaller creatures. <laughs> yeah, you're so you're, you're going to have better results. You're going to be at control. You're going to be leaping at all the little perimeter dudes that are trying to like poke at people right. from a distance or up in the air. So you can go get them and bring them down. Exactly. Uh, the other thing that I, I definitely wanted to mention as part of this is, to me, this just screams sentinel feet. Like, goodness, does it scream sentinel feet. And if you want to go like harder on the defensive side, you could take the protection you know, a yeah. fighting style with this, so you can be right next to people and force people to kind of hit you. It's like, hey, I'm here. I'm gonna leap into my next, my, over here to my friend and help him out a little bit. And leap over here, and, you know, yep. run around all over the place. And it's, yeah, it's it's creates a very interesting and with fighters, unlike all other things, you know, rogues get an extra one too. But the amount of um, ability score improvements that fighters have access to way more than everybody else. You you can get really interesting build options with fighters. Even if you have if you have two people playing the exact same you know subclass of fighter, yeah, you can grab two or three different feats and you you go you know this route with it. But you maybe you grab these two or three different feats and you go this route with it. So there's a lot of fun builds that you can have with fighter, which I think is a cool way to help them kind of stand out from being the most like just basic concept yeah. in terms of our on our exactly. feats. It's it's kind of cool that way. Yeah, so you have some utility and options on here that you otherwise wouldn't have access to. And there's lots of internal synergy going yes. on as well with all of these abilities. Yep. Though there are some limited uses again. Yeah. Per short rest. So that is nice. That Lim being limits. Said, smaller limits, but still limits. Exactly. So that being said, four. Yeah. In the synergy. So Straight across the board. Fours across the board on yes. here. A very, I think it might not be necessarily the most... I mean, it can be pretty exciting, I guess, if you're flying up in the air and knocking... <laughs> yeah, like, I just imagine, like, I think, like, Smash Bros. You get up and just freaking... Just spike somebody. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly, exactly what's happening. <laughs> so, that, I mean, that can be interesting as well. I mean, but I mean, you're oh, um, oh, you're Corin. You're basically Corin. He's got he's got the lance. He slashes out at people and pin, he pins people to the ground and everything. You like, you're basically Corin. Yeah. Without the dragon, you know, yeah, final right, smash right, thing. But I'm yeah. Sure. Anyway. But yes, it, there's definitely some utility on here and some more mobility, which is something that like barbarians, fighters, uh, monks have a little bit better chance with they, that. They do have the unarmed but movement. It's the but aerial component yeah, that this really gets up helps. into the air and plays around in a space. You're thinking like, what is he doing up there? <laughs> <laughs> so that is definitely very interesting. A very fun, if anything, subclass yeah. 
on here with for, a steel for, fi- for fighter specifically, this seems like a very fun fighter to play. Again, with the fighter being the most basic idea, right. this is a, a definitely a, not what you would think of when you think of see a guy carrying the lance. He's not just like just reaching people and trying to outrange them with poke. He's just jumping around behind them and right, yeah, you get some on. crazy stuff yeah. flying at you with a yeah. lance. Love it. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you again to Griffin Saddlebag. Awesome stuff from them. Check out yep. their website, which we'll have a link down below. And, of course, Humblewood Tales Kickstarter. Don't miss out on this one, guys. All kinds of fun little bonuses. And just being part of the community and being able to hit those stretch goals and everything yeah. can be lots of fun. So it's important to support stuff that is unique and different. Right. So make yeah. sure you check that out, guys. Lots of awesome, high-quality content coming from these guys. Definitely going to be worth your time to check out. That being said, if you enjoyed the video, remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell notifications so you know when all of our new videos are coming out. And as always, thanks for watching.